Good afternoon, Shane from DIY Retro Arcade. Today I wanted to show you what was included in the base kit of our Batacera Mini PC. You get the Mini PC, the power adapter, a USB Mini keyboard, and a display port cable to HDMI or a HDMI cable uh, depending on what port is on the back of the Mini PC. We're using various brands, many PCs. They'll be anywhere from HP, uh, Dell's are probably going to be the, the, the most common too. If you're hooking this into a TV, all you'll need to do is have the basic kit, and then you'll also need to have two wireless USB controllers. These right here are the most common ones. If you already have them, great. If you don't, uh, you can get the two that are on the listing which of course are going to be USB dongle. All you'll need to do is plug the dongle into one of the USB ports and then hook the PC into a TV and you can go to town. Everything will be plug and play and it'll work. Uh, that's if you're using our, our controllers. All these controllers should be the same as long as it looks like these. They all use the same driver, same everything. So everything should work. If you have some already, I would try them before you buy any. But if you don't, Ours will, of course, 100% work out of the box, and if not, they're easy to, to, to program in. Uh, the keyboard is already programmed in, so if nothing else, you can go through the menus with it and then get to where you can uh, program in your uh, joysticks, if, if, if nothing else. If you're hooking this into an arcade cabinet, we suggest to do a, a six-button per side layout that that works best on the fighting games and these are the components that you'll need again these are all linked at the bottom you can uh, do them as add-ons you'll need buttons of course you'll need a five pin joystick you'll need an encoder and this is one one setup per side so you'll need one encoder per, per player so if you're doing a two-player setup you'll need everything in this picture right here and like I said, again, everything is linked below. Send and light guns are also on the listing. Those will be plug and play. And all the games are already all set up and ready to go. We have two different drives. We have the um, light gun drive only, and then we have the all killer, no filler drive, which will be arcade games plus light gun games. The arcade games are only arcade uh, emulation like uh, Naomi, MAME, FB Nero, uh, Model 2, Model 3. There's no console games. Uh, the only console games that there actually are, there's a handful that are for light gun games only, but there are no console versions of arcade games. And then we also, for an upgrade, we offer the Couch Potato, which will have the light gun games all the arcade games plus uh, most of the popular consoles uh, will all be installed on it. The only time consuming portion of installing this PC is uh, wiring up the encoders. I'm going to show you how to do that today on our Terminator control deck here. I've already installed the buttons and the joysticks just to kind of speed things along. That's uh, very straightforward. The thing that's important to note, if you're doing uh, a six button setup and that's what you really should be using on this, is to position the buttons uh, correctly. So we suggest that you do Y, X, L, and B, A, and R. And also to have a start and select button. Uh, the select is also used for coin. But if you use this pattern, then uh, it will be the best for fighting games. I've already got one side wired up and so I'm going to walk you through installing this one side here. It's it's very straightforward. Know that whenever you flip the panel over that it's going to be reversed so now your button here will be B, A, R, X, or excuse me Y, X, and L and then on the front one this one is marked start and select the thing that's very important if you'll use this diagram that we have on the listing it tells you where to hook the buttons on the encoder and if you wire it up just like this then 
it's plug and play. So as soon as you power on, everything will just work. And what's also very important is you have two encoders, one for each player. Both of these need to be identical. So you have to wire them up 100% identical. If you don't, then it's not going to work. So let's walk through this real quick and, and show you how this is done. This is, like I said, again, very simple. Make sure that you also install the encoders fairly close to the buttons because the cables are, are short. The joystick one is the one that usually gets you because it's only like, like six or eight inches. So make sure you, you're, you're pretty close by. The, the joystick will plug in right here. But if you look at the diagram here, you're using the bottom 12 pins on the encoder and I always tell people to position it exactly how I have it in the image so that way everything is exact and, and it's, it's very straightforward so the first one by looking at the diagram here is going to be B and if you'll label your buttons as well it'll also make sure you don't mess anything up so all you want to do the, the very first slot on this encoder board is B is, is take it and plug it into B. And then take this one and B is the very first one. Plug it in right there. Then your next one is going to be Y, which is the one above it. And on the red and black wires, on a button like this, it really doesn't matter which color you plug into which pole. I always try to stay consistent just because, in my opinion, it looks more professional. But it really doesn't matter because all you're doing is closing the loop. And then Y will plug in right there. And then your next button will be A. And it'll hook you in right there. Then we're going to X. Then we got R. And I'm going to tell you, if you do mess up and you put the black and the red in opposite places, I wouldn't suggest trying to fight it to get it off. These things are horribly hard to get off once you lock them in. It's not worth the fight. The only time it matters is, is if it's an LED button on the power. And then next one is the L.
and then we have the start back onto the start sorry my camera cut off there that one in and then last is the select and this is like I said literally the hardest thing to do other than that it is very plug and play and this isn't bad at all goes there and that is every button wired in your joystick you'll have your lock your lines so it'll face this way it only plugs in one one way so plug that in right there and then take this cable again the locks you can see the slits there plug that in there and that is 100% wired up. And you want to do the exact same thing on this side. But like I said, we've already got that done. No one wants to see it twice. And then you have your USB cable. And the USB cable will plug in right here on the end. Again, it only plugs in one, one way. One thing that I do suggest that you do whenever you bundle all your wires together is to make sure that you include your USB cable in the bundle that way when you're tugging on it and pulling on it it it, it kinda helps that from getting pulled out because this is what's going to get pulled on the most but other than that that's that's very straightforward and this is again plug and play uh, with the uh, the encoder boards that we sell that are on the listing if you get those encoder boards and you hook it up just like this when you power on the PC, the buttons will all be pre-configured and everything will just work right out of the box. Once you get the encoder boards all wired in, this is everything that it would take to fully 100% install the kit into your arcade cabinet. Uh, what The only thing that's missing is you'll need a surge strip and this right here will mount on the back side of your arcade on the back of the cabinet and this will be on the inside and then your surge strip will plug into this and then for the mini PC connection you have the control deck right here and then on the control deck both of these USBs these ends these are what goes to the encoder boards. So I'm going to set this over here, the actual panel out of the way. So all you'll need to do is take your mini PC. On the back you'll have the USB ports. Take each encoder, each USB for the encoder, and plug into a port and both of those will be hooked up then you'll have your your power cable it'll hook into right here so we'll set that down and then this end right here it'll have the the, other, the rest of the cable the, the power cable right here and this right here will plug into there and then this right here will plug into your surge strip that plugs into the EMI for the main power so for, for sound we suggest that you use our sound bar all you'll need to do for it is plug into a USB port and then you have two sound ports we always use this one right here besides the USB 
So plug that in there, and that will work. And that and that's powered through the USB. And then you'll have your Display port cable. Notice that it does have, that's the HDMI side. So notice that this thing does have a lock on it. So when you do pull it out of the back of the mini PC to push in on that and then pull out. If not, it, it won't come out. So all you'll need to do on the back of the PC, you'll notice you have two display ports. And some PCs may have an HDMI. It, again, it depends on what you have. But all you need to do is simply plug that into the display port and then of course hook this other end into the to the uh, monitor LCD whatever you're hooking it into and that's pretty much every connection you need to make if you have the send and light guns they'll plug into the USB you can plug one into the back if you're using the sound bar and plug one into the front uh, that usually works the best I'm trying to think of anything else that needs to hook into this. Uh, it, it's like I said, guys. It, it, it's still it's 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 very straightforward. Um, if you are using our EMI switch, you'll need to go into the BIOS and uh, set it so that whenever you power on, it makes the PC boot without having to push the power button. So that way you can leave this inside the cabinet. I do have a help file that shows you how to do that online in our help section for the PC. But very straightforward, very easy install, much faster than a Pi, and much more dependable.